Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Sunday live streams. Uh, I am your host Dana and I have my co-host with me this week, Becca. As you can tell, she dyed her hair recently. It's very purple. <laughs> it is really cool though. Like an eggplant. It kind of makes me want to re-dye my hair, but I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to recolor my hair or not. Okay, so we are back for... <laughs> Do it. <laughs> we are back for part three of our um, beginner crochet project. Oh, Tasha says your hair looks great. Thank you, Tasha. <laughs> um, and welcome, Tasha. And so we are going to be pretty much... We, I've pretty much taught you guys everything you need to know to make this scarf so basically we're just going to keep switching uh colors every 20 rows until we have um our scarf at the length we'd like um like i said for my regular one i did seven of the first color and mm -hmm. six of the second so if you want it to be longer you can keep going uh, so pretty much we're just gonna I mean, if you guys have questions and want me to answer or show you something that you would like me to reshow, I'm happy to do that. But we're kind of just going to work on our, our scarves and hang out and just chill. So I'm going to go ahead and... I've taught you everything you need to know. <laughs> Switch us over. So uh, we must be on that like roll of we'd like to change things every week. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the beauty of live streaming, right? Is that you get to kind of just play around with what you like and what you don't like. So today we're in circles. Okay, so how to change. You said to... Here, I will go ahead and re-go over okay. how to change. And then you can... I know Miss Becca wasn't here last week, so <laughs> we got to re-show her how to do it. Yeah, I had to learn... Okay, so last week was part two and we added our second color. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my first color... And so I have my uh, crochet hook in my last single crochet, but I'm not, it's before the last yarn over. Okay. Like that. Oh, so wait, you want it, it to... Yeah, so basically what I do is I pull out the last one of the row and then I start my, my last single crochet. So I yarn over and pull through and then I just leave it like that with the two okay. loops on the hook. Okay, got it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut my blue yarn first. And then I'm going to take my new color. And you're basically just going to loop it from front to back onto your hook. And I usually like to make my tails match oops, the same length just because I'm very, everything has to match. I respect it. And so basically the new color is taking place of your yarn over. And so now we're going to take that loop of our new color and pull it through our two loops to complete that last single crochet. Okay, got it. And now we've just added our new color. And so we chain one. Proceed as normal. Sometimes I like to pull the previous color tight a little bit just to make sure that that single crochet is tight. Not too tight, obviously, to where we can't work into it, but because sometimes it does get loose when you pull the new color in. Yeah, and then you just... Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. And so now we can just start our new row. And that's... I see what you... It is pretty, pretty easy... Oops. ...to switch colors. Yeah, so tonight we're working on square three. Which, if you're only using two colors for your scarf, it'll be your color A that you should be on. Or if you want to be adventurous and use different, more than two colors, this is where you would add like a third color. And there you go. Oh, I see. Okay, you're right though. That I don't, I don't know why it's so loose. Your first one? Yeah, I keep getting it really loose. Let me try this again. 
Yeah, so you'll want to complete it first. And maybe once you work a couple in, you can even pull your new tail a little tight too. That might help. Make it not so not so loose. Okay. How's everybody's Sunday? Anybody have an interesting weekend? I actually didn't do too much yesterday. We spent yesterday cleaning and doing other stuff. My oldest actually wasn't feeling good because she had shots on Friday, so kind of was monitoring her all day yesterday, but she's doing a lot better today. So today, because I was so distracted and busy cleaning, I didn't want to do anything today, so. I have been 0% productive today. That's okay. You can have days like that sometimes. Sundays are usually like that for me. Uh, okay. Thank you, mysterious commenter. I don't know how to do that, Cameron. <laughs> mysterious commenter. <laughs> It literally says Cameron McWaters. <laughs> I know, I'm just teasing. <laughs> okay. Um, I turned it up a little bit. I think so. So why don't you tell me if that made a difference or not. And if it didn't, then I will try something else. <laughs> Mysterious commenter. You're so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Who is this man? There we go. There How we does he know about colors. the inner workings of the system? <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Who are you? Tell me your name. Okay. How how does that look? Does that look okay? I just went in a little bit. So you can kinda get a feel here. It looks... It looks wrong. It looks wrong? It looks weird. It looks weird. Okay, so what you did... Is you did it, but then you skipped that first single crochet. Um... Uh... Okay. So yeah, I would go back and then maybe once you yarn over with the new yarn, bring it back over and maybe I'll show you how to, or maybe see what is going wrong there. Okay. So... split right there. Can you guys see that? That's gonna bother me. There we go. How does that look? That looks a little bit better. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, so what you did is you skipped it and you went okay, over here gotcha. and that's why it looked all wonky. Gotcha. Okay, so good job. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Yay! Tasha, how are you on this fine Sunday? Do anything exciting today? Let's see here. One thing I have noticed, and I don't know if it's the yarn or if it's my crochet hook because my this crochet hook is actually pretty pointy mm -hmm. it sometimes splits my yarn hmm so it makes it look frayed yeah I noticed that with the first one I used when we when we did our first like single crochet um, practice uh-huh that oh the, the purple one yeah or it was like the did, orangey yeah. red one that you had me use that one was really pointy and I was having a hard time. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the hook. Yeah, the hook itself, oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, see? That hook. So, it's interesting. I have two of these furl crochet hooks in size H, and one of them is rounded here, and so I have no problems, but this one is actually has, like, a point. Mm. And so, like, I love using my... I can't find my black one. I don't know where it went. It's literally MIA, so I might need to buy me a new one. But they're all made, like, uniquely, so I could potentially mm -hmm. get another pointy one, or I can get another rounded one, like my first one. So I don't know. I just have to be, like, extra careful. Yeah. Because my yarn just split, like, three times already. Um, why? I mean, obviously, because then you crochet into the yarn itself yeah like so it like it other... snags it mm. and like splits it see mm. so sometimes like here like if it doesn't catch it just right it'll mm. catch it like that mm. and then it'll split it mm -hmm. or like right here actually it's when you're pulling it into the loop because it just did it again like it'll snag on the loop yeah and split it that so makes sense. So I have to like make sure that I'm pointing my hook oops in the right downward. Gotcha. To go down so it doesn't split. So is that a yarn thing or is that a hook thing? It sometimes can be a yarn thing where it's just it snags easily, which the it depends on the way it's spun. Mm-hmm. Uh and it also depends on the hook. So like if it wasn't so pointy, like I wonder if I ha I don't have my other one. Well, I have this, but this isn't the right size, but this one's more rounded. Here, I'm just gonna do a couple with this one and see if it does it. If it still splits. I don't have to go back though, because this is too big of a hook for me. Yeah, see this one doesn't split, so it might, it might be my hook. Because I just have no problems. Because there's nothing for it to snag on. So if there's something there to snag on, it will gotcha. cause issues. That makes sense. But there's some yarn, it, like, some yarn, it won't, it doesn't bother, like, when, I actually don't, now I don't remember, but when I was working on that blanket for our Whip Wednesday Live, mm -hmm. I used the same hook, and it was perfectly no fine. Mm. I didn't have any issues, so... Maybe it really just yarn depends on the yarn. And, yeah, some yarn and some hooks don't get along. Yeah, because there's a bulky yarn that I use that actually a lot of crocheters have like designed stuff with. Mm. And I try to crochet with it. I'm like, I don't understand how somebody could design a whole blanket with this yarn because it splits so much. Yeah. Interesting. And it's, again, it's like a way it's, it's a pain in the it's butt. spun. Interesting. I don't remember what, how that one spun, but I think this one's similar. Mm. And that's, and that could be, that could be feeding the problem. Gotcha. But it's, de it's got to definitely be my hook. Did I, did I? I did. I did. Okay, we're good. Sorry, I was questioning whether or not I chained up or not. I was like, uh-oh having a crisis there so what are some good like other than what we're working on like what are some other good beginner projects if you're learning how to crochet um dishcloths dishcloths or like washcloths mm -hmm. those i mean that because that's basically a square so that's really easy that's like a good like swatch project mm-hmm blankets like if you want a really long project that's just gonna help you master your skill mm -hmm. uh, a blanket would be good too especially one with multiple colors because then you can practice color changing yeah and then it kind of switches it up for you to where you're not using the same color it like it would make it less boring mm -hmm. like if you're not into like repetitive same thing and you want it you want it to be like exciting every time you work yeah. on it um, changing colors, like making a blanket with like five different colors would probably be good. Um, hats and cows are usually really good too. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people, usually their first thing is like, I made beanies. Yeah. The thing is with hats, you have to learn, oh my gosh, I'm shaking the camera too much. Um, you have to learn how to crochet in the round. Mm -hmm. So you would still have to learn a new skill mm -hmm. to make a beanie. 
but that's not too hard. What does crochet in the round mean? You crochet in a circle. Okay, gotcha. So you basically, you start with uh, a circle middle and then it, you oh, expand it by increasing your that stitches. Makes that makes sense. Though, depending on what kind of beanie you want to make, you can mm -hmm. make a beanie that usually when you start with a small circle, that's when you make a beanie from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, you can start, you can make a beanie from bottom to top, mm -hmm. which a lot of beanies you make the, um, the ribbing first. Okay. And that straight line, that's basically six of these, but you only work in the back loop. Oh. And so you make that the length, well, as long as your width of your mm -hmm. hat would be. Yeah. And then you just crochet on top, like you crochet on the side. So you turn it to the side and then you would make your, your single crochets oh. into the chains. Okay. And that's technically working in the round, but you don't have to like yeah. start the round. That makes sense. It kind of just does it for you. So fun fact about working in the round. Um, when I was really young, my mom tried to have us all learn how to crochet and jokes on her I had no interest in learning and I, she had like one of the high school girls who was learning how to crochet come over and teach us and she hosted like a class kind of a thing for our other homeschool kids and I learned how to do like a chain like how to do a chain just basic chain and I wanted to for some reason make a rug for my Barbies but I couldn't figure out how to make it in a circle. I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, how the heck do you do this? So I was like, I know. I'm just going to make a really, really long chain and then like ghetto sew it all in a circle. So that's what I did. I just made this like really long crochet chain. And then I took my needle and my thread and I sewed it all into a circle. And I was like, look, mom, I made a rug. And she actually bought it. She was like, oh my gosh, how did you know how to do that? How did you learn how to do that? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> How did you? So you made like a basic chain and then you sewed it together? Yeah. But I just used like regular sewing, like just a needle and thread. So did you like, did you like start with one end and then like just make I just, a circle? Yeah, I just made it. I circled it on itself and then I just sewed it together. <laughs> that is kind of cool. But that was my, uh, my idea for making my Barbie rug that I wanted so desperately, but I did not want to take the time to learn how to like better crooks. I wanted to, I was one of those kids that like, I didn't want to like just learn a little thing at, at a time. I wanted to be like awesome at it right away. And I wanted to know Tell how to do it right all. away. It, like, so, but I was so mad because I was like, when can I learn how to make a Barbie rug? And, and Kim was the girl that taught us was like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, sure you do. Just make it in a circle. And she's like, I, I don't know how to teach you how to do that. So I was like, fine, I'll do it myself. Wait, so the high schooler who was teaching you how to crochet didn't know how to make a circle? I, I don't know. I think she was just confused at my request for a Barbie rug. I think that's where I lost her. So I was like, no, you know, like crochet in like a circle. And she's like, like a hat? I was like, no, like a rug, duh. And she's like, ah, I don't know about that. So I don't know. Uh, you know I what? I, I wonder if she her. was imagining... Because you know how rugs are more like this. Mm hmm Like oval mm -hmm. instead of a circular. Which yeah. you can still do that in crochet. Yeah. I, yeah. I can show you how to do that yeah. in crochet. But uh, I adapted. <laughs> I survived to my that Barbie's is, Honestly, rugs. that is great creativity. So <laughs> Thank you. So I say props for you. Thank you. Thank you. And apparently you impressed your mother. So Yeah, she thought I actually like crocheted the whole thing. Like I did all the the That's stitches funny. together. And she was like, you're a prodigy. And I was like... <laughs> You're like, jokes on you. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's funny because I... See, look, at it's, it's split again. Um, as you were it, describing mm -hmm. the rug, not in the full circle, but when I was thinking of like a rug for a Barbie, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is how you would do it. Yeah. You basically would chain and then you'd single crochet in the top of the chain and then you'd do three in the last chain mm -hmm. and then you'd crochet on the other side of the chain. You know, I'm just going to show you. Yeah, I was like, I, you lost me at, at three. <laughs> I'll take out my cute little swatch. Your little swatch, okay. Oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have put out my cute little swatch. You know what? We'll, my we'll mom, do the gray. 
Okay, the gray. She was very hurt that I did not continue to crochet my Barbie rugs. She was like, wow, you were so good at it. I was like, <laughs> no, I was not. Sure. <laughs> okay, so basically what you would do is you would chain however, like, in the sense how long you would want it. So let's do, like, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's even. And then basically what you would do is you would single crochet down the chain just like you normally would. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the last chain, you would go one, two, three. And then the you basically find where you made the original one mm -hmm. on the other side and crochet. You could pretty much crochet into the same spot. So it's like touching the top ones. Oh, uh, yep, yep. And then you make it in the... And then when you get to the last one, you just add two more since you already have one in the last mm -hmm. one. So here's my last one and I'll just add two more. One, two... And then you join. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep going. For however big you want your Barbie rug to be. And then when you get to your first side, or your first three in one, in the second one, so here. So here's my three. So I crochet normally in the first one, and then mm -hmm. in the second one, I would do three more. Because you want the sides to still to basically increase and make it still stay a circle oh. actually I wonder if you would maybe not do that you would do two in each of the three so two one two and two I'd have to figure that out. I mean, that, that looks pretty... But that this is the kind of rug I was imagining. Yeah, yeah but imagine like that, but in a spiral. Like, a crazy spiral. <laughs> yeah, like, you could make a circular mm -hmm. rug and just, uh, like I said, like, basically the start of a yeah. beanie, which she could have showed you that. Yeah. And then the you could have made a circular rug. Inspiration was a rug that we actually had in our house. And it was a bunch of different fabric that was uh, braided together. And then that was in the same shape that you had right then. Where, but it was big ovals like all the way around. Mm -hmm. And it was all uh, sewn together. And you could see the like the black thread yeah, that was Nana sewn had a bunch together. Of those. Did she, I guess it was popular. It was a popular thing. Style. And so I was like, well, I can, why can't I do that? with this so i tried it and it worked out pretty dang good my barbies had a plethora of rugs and then i was like we could turn these into coasters yep i turned them into coasters my mom was like stop making these we have too many <laughs> like, i was like but mom i'm a prodigy <laughs> yeah she's like make something else <laughs> like okay prodigy figure out something else something you can else. Make. Did you, were you ever like, when you learned how to make something as a kid, were you just like stuck on that one thing that you learned how to make and you just wanted to make only that one thing? Uh, yeah, that's why I have seven latch hooks in my hope chest. <laughs> just wanted to start a new one. Oh, I completed all of them. Oh, you did complete all of yep. them? Yep. Mm -hmm. But like, what the heck do you do with a latch hook? I gifted a couple. Like I did mm -hmm. a German Shepherd one and gave it to my Nana's neighbor who mm -hmm. breeded German Shepherds. Oh, yeah. Um, and she hung it on her wall in her living room. You gave me a panda one. I gave you the panda one. I still have it, by the way. And then I made a, wh a killer whale one for Shawneen. Oh, cute. My friend Shawneen. And I made the lighthouse one we saw at Hobby Lobby. I made that one for Grandma. I think cute. Grandma still has it. Uh, I didn't save a lot of things from our house, but I wanted to, for some reason I was like, I'm gonna save this latch hook that Dana made me. So it's in my in one of my boxes of like keepsakes. <laughs> um, that's awesome. 
there so there is like a special way to finish them off where it's like you use rug binding mm -hmm. and i could never figure out how to do that so basically i would just fold oh because it you'd have like you know extra around the outside mm -hmm. of when you'd finish i basically just fold i think with yours i like folded them over and then so yeah them you together. did yeah i think that's that so like you could put it in a frame um but really like i have one that's shaped like a rug and i still don't know how to mm. how to finish it off so that it is a rug that was the one thing uh, one part of lash lash hooking that i could not figure out no matter how hard I tried. And nobody else knew how to latch hook, so nobody else could show me. Yeah. I probably could look it up on YouTube now. <laughs> Maybe I'll end up you probably could. binding off all of my other ones that are oh, still on my chest. help chest. Like, I it's have... It's that, like, adhesive stuff, right? It's no, like this, it like... was, like, thick... Uh, it was almost like fabric like ribbon. Ru oh, okay, gotcha. Because I've seen... I saw somebody make a rug. Kind of like latch hook st with, like, a latch hook type of thing. They just drew out this picture of Totoro and then they used their, their punch and they just punched a bunch of yarn in it and then they put this like, this ad not adhesive, but it was almost this like liquid binder that they put on the back of it and it sealed it. Hmm. Because it it's that like non, like that non-slip rubbery grip stuff that's on the bottom. Hi, Crochet Kelly. Hello. Interesting. You know I, I actually don't know what you're talking about. Okay, cool. Adhesive, uh, but it makes it non-slip? Yeah, so you can actually use it as like a rug. Like where it's waterproof and it seals it. So oh, your, your I know what you're talking about. Like on like, the bottom of an actual Yeah, rug. yeah. And the, they actually sell it to where you can put it on the bottom of your stuff. No, that's stuff. not what it was. It was no. basically like, like I said, it looked like thick fabric. Gotcha. And it sealed it off. And somehow, you I don't even remember. I remember trying to read the directions, and I was like, forget this crap. I'm just <laughs> it's too much off. work. I'm just going to trim the edges. Love the colors. Thank you. I do, too. I really like this yellow. I also really like this blue. And they actually complement each other really well. We are just working on our beginner scarves. We started our third square. So we went back to our first color, or for those who are using multiple or more than two colors, it would be a better third color. We're just hanging out and chatting. What are you up to on this fine Sunday? Question. Yes. Is my tension too much? I feel like I might have No, I don't think so. Fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, that actually looks good. It looks like it has an hourglass figure. Because that bottom is, like, so fluffy. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, I, th I think it's just because you've gotten better. Okay. Like, well, now that you're getting... News. Now that you've gotten comfortable with it, you're probably now fitting into your tension. Okay. It's totally fine. Remember, okay, this cool. is your first scarf. That's true. It can but look it a must be perfect. <laughs> Remember, you can always make okay. another one. <laughs> You're right. I'll make a better one. In cooler colors. I legit want to make a Von Goff sweater now. With that Luke's Diner. Oh. That color. You... It's so I thought pretty. it was pronounced Van Gogh. Is it not Van Gogh? Um, In America, I think it's Van Gogh. Oh. I think, because he was, what was he? He wasn't French. I thought he was French. I was going to say he French? French. Hang on. That's that's how I've heard every European person pronounce it, is Van Gogh. Interesting. But, I yeah, I don't. Watching Family Guy. That's awesome. <laughs> it's evening time where you are. Right, Crochet Kelly? Because you're in the UK. Also, Am what I episode? I remembering that correctly? If I'm not, I apologize. But I think I think you said you were in the UK last time you hung out with us. Yeah, nearly midnight. Ah, he was Dutch. Okay, that's what, yeah. So, yeah, the GH. Family Guy is a funny show. I actually haven't watched Family Guy in a long time. What episode are you on? Are you watching new ones or are you watching old ones? Oh, boy. Want to become famous? No, don't want to become famous. 
Yeah, no thanks. Do you want me to get rid of the... Yeah, because I don't know yeah. how to do that. I don't think I can do that from Restream. No worries, I can do it. I Ooh, modern. new ones. I didn't even know they were still making new Family Guy episodes. Spam. Oh, look, I'm almost out of coffee. Oh, no. I am, too. <laughs> no! <laughs> Husband, help. Need a little bell. Ding a ling a ling. <laughs> <laughs> they love that. <laughs> uh, I am drinking. Oh, I think we're both drinking coffee. Yeah. And I probably. think we're both drinking the same creamer. The peppermint. <laughs> chocolate peppermint bark. Our white, yeah, white chocolate peppermint bark mm -hmm. creamer. So basically, like a white chocolate peppermint mocha. Yeah. I honestly don't know really which my husband made it for me. So. I think it was that one. Because I heard him ask if that was fine. <laughs> what was the one? Um, what was that one Family Guy episode where? There, oh, I don't even remember what. I just heard the audio from it, but Stewie and Brian are like, Brian. He's like, "Is this our vacation?" And they're like surrounded in like <laughs> questionable paraphernalia. Brian's like, "Uh huh." He's like, "Brian, are we trash?" Yep. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what that episode is. My favorite ones are always the James Woods murder mystery episodes. Yes, when they all go to the house. The house, the, the two-part mansion. like That one is <laughs> hilarious. I do love that one, too. And Quagmire brings like his like ugly girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, and doesn't she die first? <laughs> she does. <laughs> and she has that like really obnoxious, like, oh, hi, Quagmire. I can't even do it. but <laughs> <laughs> It's like kind of raspy. That's he's so like embarrassed funny. by her because so i remember he brought her thinking it was going to be like just a them thing and he's like uh i don't know her <laughs> that's funny good old quagmire yeah so crochet kelly we well i should not speak for rebecca i become very peppermint obsessed this time of year <laughs> I i'm only peppermint obsessed when i'm with you to be honest <laughs> <laughs> so um I like to try everybody's version of their peppermint mocha creamer. And so the white chocolate peppermint bark is um, Aldi's version. And that I don't think you guys have Aldi. It might just be a U.S. thing, but that's one of our smaller grocery store things. Um, but yeah, so I am always drinking peppermint something. I was on a quest to find peppermint hot mm. chocolate and couldn't find it. And my sweet, sweet friend, Katie, who lives in Indiana, uh, was like, here, I'm going to buy you like five boxes or something. <laughs> buy me a bunch of boxes. So mm. that was really nice. The best one is where Brian slept with Quagmire's dad. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I have not seen that one. <laughs> Rut row. <laughs> they might not have all these, but they do have Nando's. I don't know. Uh, it's chicken, right? Right, Kelly? It's not like chicken. Nando's, is it a chicken store? It's Well, it's like chicken sandwiches. And oh. it's really, really popular. Americans are always like, oh my gosh, Nando's. I see. I think they might have opened the first one around here. <laughs> Stepmom. <laughs> Stepmommy. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Was it a revenge episode? I hope it was a revenge episode because those are always the best. Dang it. I am super shaking the camera tonight. Uh -oh. Sorry, guys. I remember in 2000, I think it was like 2013 to 14. I never, I'd never watched Family Guy, but whenever Kaylee would come and like live at my house for an entire week because she didn't want to go home. We would just binge watch Family Guy episodes. It was the most Family Guy I'd ever watched in my entire life. My dad was like, I thought you hated the show. I was like, I'd never watched it, so I don't really have an opinion on it. But now I think it's hilarious. Crochet Kelly says, in my opinion, uh, Nando's ain't, that, uh, ain't all that. I'd imagine probably not. It's very hyped up here because it's something that we don't have, you know? Mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. like when Southern California got a Cracker Barrel. Everyone was like, oh my gosh. Well, people, like, obviously I like In-N-Out, but, like, 
when you talk about in and out in the Midwest, they're like, oh, it's like liquid gold out there because mm-hmm. they don't know what it is <laughs> and they yeah. don't have it. And it's it's like that. It's like the uh, the cool person like they got to try in and out and everyone's like, oh, what was it like? Like, oh my gosh, you got to try in and out. Let's have a meeting and discuss. Yep. It's kind of like that kid at school. They got to go to Disneyland for their vacation. And right. all the other kids are like, oh my gosh, what was it like? Did you see Mickey? <laughs> what were you doing? Where else was, oh my gosh, what was it like? And, you know, oh, everyone's like funny. surrounded the kid. But in this case, it's over a burger. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, what was it like? What is spread? What is spread? Are the burgers actually good? South Park is the best though. I didn't really watch a lot of South Park. Neither. I watch Family Guy and Futurama, well, and Simpsons. Um, there's some. There was another show that I like to watch, and I can't think of what it's called. Were you a robot chicken kid? <laughs> uh, I was a robot chicken teenager. Teenager. <laughs> You didn't watch that when you were in preschool? <laughs> <laughs> I want a Wendy's, but doubt that will happen. Dude, Wendy's is so good. Wendy's is really good, actually. They have phenomenal burgers. We were actually talking about this the other night, where we were talking about fast food. Mm-hmm. And in Indiana, we had a Wendy's literally down the street from my house. And that mm-hmm. was really only the best. The In my opinion, it was the best fast food we had mm-hmm. in, Indiana, in, in, in Indiana. In Indiana. <laughs> in Indiana. In Indiana. Um, and so since we moved to California and we've been able to have in and out I haven't had Wendy's in a long time. And we were talking about fast food the other night. And I'm like, you know, I am craving Wendy's. Mm-hmm. I haven't had Wendy's in like, I want to say a year. Yeah. I remember you guys would do Frosty Fridays, weren't, wouldn't you? You'd go get like the dollar Frosties whenever you could. Yeah, we'd switch between Frosties and, like, if we didn't want to spend a lot of money on ice cream, we'd get Frosties. Or if we really yeah. wanted to treat ourselves, we'd do Dairy Queen, because Dairy Queen was down the street, too. Oh, yeah, the Midwest staple. Mm-hmm. Always gotta have Yeah, because, like, and it's harder to get it in the winter, because some locations would close for the season. Like, the Dairy Queen down the street from my mom's house would really? close, I think, like in the beginning of november or something it wouldn't open again until like march that's interesting i didn't know that Mm -hmm. is it just the weather Uh, i assume so that one was a walk-up but it also was a drive-thru so interesting maybe it was like a snow thing they didn't want to risk getting snowed and not being able to go to work uh yeah i have no idea midwestern snowstorms are pretty intense they are they are very intense I think if I ever went to America, it would only be for Wendy's. For Wendy's? I support you. That's awesome. Wendy's is dang good. They're one of the few burgers that do not make me sick. Yeah, their burgers aren't too bad. I really yeah. like their um, their Asiago chicken sandwich. Mm. Yeah, they do have really good chicken sandwiches. I can only eat, like, it sounds kind of bougie, but my stomach just hates fast food in general. I eat McDonald's. I feel like I'm going to die. Which is probably a good thing. It probably is. Like, I love Carl's Jr. or Hardee's hand-breaded chicken tenders. Mm -hmm. Those hand-breaded chicken tenders are so good. But the last time I had them, I think it was on your birthday, I thought, like, I thought I was going to die. Oh, yeah, when we had birthday dinner and Mm -hmm. I wanted Carl's Jr. Yeah. I was so, so miserable that whole ride home. I was like, I'm going to throw up. So I was like, I guess that's the last time I'm going to have. That sucks. Because I've yeah. also been craving Carl's Jr. <laughs> yeah. I really like Carl's Jr. too. Yeah, I know you do. Carl's Jr. is good. What is your favorite? Oh, what are you two doing over Christmas? Um. Well, Christmas Eve, I think we're going to spend some time with part of Cameron, my husband's family. And then our church, I think, is having a Christmas Eve service. So we'll be doing that, and then Christmas Day we usually spend it with my my family, and I think we're still gonna get together and um, do a gift exchange and have a nice Christmas dinner, and and then actually that weekend um, we will be having a friends miss. So friends Becca miss. and her husband, and then our friend Kaylee and her husband we'll be here and we'll have our own christmas yeah. with them christmas weekend hang out or whatever so nothing too 
nothing too crazy. Yeah. I'll probably end up Christmas Eve. We usually celebrate with my family, my brother and his wife and my niece. We'll probably do our usual Christmas Eve. Although we haven't really, I personally have not had to or been able to have a Christmas with my brother in like five years. So this is going to be really, really fun. That's crazy to, to think get about. to. Yeah, so that'll be really nice to be able to go and spend time with them. We used to make a giant pot of soup and have like a movie marathon and then like just kind of have snack foods all evening and watch Christmas movies or we'd watch Lord of the Rings or we'd watch some marathon um, Oceans movies or something like that. And then we do Christmas presents that day because usually we would be, we wouldn't really be busy on Christmas day, but we would, it was just, it was like a fun day to like spend with friends and family. So we would try to do our like intimate family get together on Christmas Eve. But this year I think we'll probably end up over with my brother's in-laws because they're practically like my husband and I's family. So we'll spend some time with them on Christmas day and then friends miss. Ooh, favorite Christmas movie. That, That's a I good can't question. pick one. I would say the, fir like if I had to pick the first one that would come to mind. Oh, see, I can't though. Cause now I have two <laughs> <laughs> top three. Okay. The Santa Claus, the first one, the mm -hmm. original. I really like the second one too, but you know, the originals are always the best. The Holiday is another one of my absolute favorites. And honestly, I watched that movie year round. Yeah. Um, that's the one with Cameron Diaz, Jack Black, Jude Law, and Kate Winslet. It's cheesy, but I love it. And actually, it's like me and my mom's favorite movie. And then the third one is Christmas Vacation because that movie is hilarious. <laughs> that's with Chevy Chase, right? It is with Chevy Chase, yeah. yeah. And then, like I said, there's too many. Those would be my top, top three, but like... My mom and I usually have traditions where we'll watch like some of the old black and white Christmas movies. Not really It's a Wonderful Life, but like um, the old timey Christmas Carol, The Bishop's Wife that has Cary Grant in it. That's another good one. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I wish mom was watching. She could tell me what it's called. There's another one with Spencer Tracy and it's a Christmas one and I cannot think of what it's called. Mm -hmm. I want, the one I'm thinking of is called Boys Town, but I don't know if that's a Christmas one. That's that's with Mickey Rooney, like young. Oh my gosh, Mickey baby Rooney. Mickey Rooney, like 16 year old Mickey Rooney, like pre plastic surgery <laughs> Mickey Rooney. Yeah, like the good years before plastic surgery was a thing. Yeah, Mickey Rooney. <laughs> um, wow. And there was another. Oh no, yeah, Christmas in Connecticut was another black and white one we really like to watch. Sounds like fun. But, like, I also love, like, I love Elf. Elf is one of my favorites, too. Mm -hmm. And then another one that actually we've started watching with our kids a lot every year is the Muppets Christmas Carol. I think that's, that's probably my favorite my favorite Christmas mo Carol movie. Uh, Scrooge is also pretty funny, though, too. And that's with Bill Murray. See, I have too many. Yeah, so a lot of Christmas <laughs> <laughs> Too many! All right, Becky, your turn. Um, I like Elf. I usually watch Elf, Charlie Brown Christmas, and Die Hard every year for Christmas. Those are my favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> I stand firmly next to those. <laughs> um, Christmas Vacation, that's the jam of the, like, the jam of the month club one, right? Yes. Where he gets the jam jelly of, the, okay. of the, jelly of the month. Yeah, yeah, jelly of the month club. Yeah. But yeah, those are the ones that I usually try to watch every Christmas. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes Christmas movies actually really stress me out. Really? Why? Yeah, like, it's usually about, like, a dad who, like, just sucks at being a dad. And, like, he has to figure out the meaning of Christmas and, like, how much he actually loves his family. Like, I watched Jingle All the Way for the first time last year. And that movie stressed me out so bad because I'm like, just make a good decision. Like, just one. This all could be avoided if you just made, like, one good choice. <laughs> and it stressed me out. But I like I like good, warm, warm-hearted Christmas movies. Like Die Hard, you know? <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Wholehearted. Happy. Very simple. 
happy and violent. All happy right. and violent. Ho, ho, ho. I mean, I also really love all the claymation movies. Like, I think if I had to pick one of my favorite claymation Christmas oh. movies would be The Year Without Santa. I love the Heat Miser and Snow Miser. Oh, I remember Rudolph with the Lumberjack. Yeah, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Yeah, Rainer. those are Jingle Jangle on Christmas. Oh, yeah, Christmas. I wanted to see that. I haven't seen that one. Which one did we watch? That was a, that was a Netflix Christmas one last year. We watched a bunch of those cheesy, like, Hallmark ones. Like, I think we watched, like, the Christmas, like, Prince for Christmas or something. Oh, the yeah. Those, yeah. The or whatever. I still never saw the second one. But, um. Those are so cheesy. They're good. I know. We love them. That's, I love uh, the Hallmark cheesy movies. And actually, so does Cameron. <laughs> Cameron loves watching those cheesy movies with me. Those He's a are, good husband. Um, my friend in Okinawa, Michelle, those are like her absolute favorite movies on the planet. She goes all in for those kind of movies. So she was so excited that, but we, we both like to watch them for separate reasons. I like to watch them because they're hilarious and like so cheesy and silly and funny. And she loves them because they're like just right up her alley. Like she just loves that kind of movie where it's like, she knows exactly what's going to happen and she just loves the cheesy so it's so funny because I remember the first time we watched one, she was like, oh, don't you love it? And I'm like sitting in the corner trying to like stifle my laughter of how silly it is. Like, <laughs> But I love watching them because they're so funny. Okay, I'm already done with my 20 rows, so I'm going to start another square. <laughs> What's I'm your like... favorite Christmas movie, Crochet Kelly? Tell us your ways. Is there European classics? I love the Family Guy Christmas episode <laughs> where <laughs> Lois tries to not lose it on Christmas and then she loses it and like turns into the Hulk and like tries to destroy Christmas. <laughs> that one I is hilarious. We used to have the tradition one. of watching that every year. We'll have to look it up and watch it. I would love when to. When the kids go to bed because it's kind of like my uh, it's funny. every Thanksgiving episode of Bob's Burger. Every and Thanksgiving. Stewie plays Baby Jesus in the Nativity <laughs> So that makes it even better. <laughs> Arthur Christmas. Oh, I haven't seen that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one either. What is that one? I have to look it up. Isn't that about Santa's son or something like that? I know I there's know. actually a lot of. Oh, what's the? Ah, uh, what's that movie about? All of the, all of the holiday people. With Jack Frost in it. Oh, that's, um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Something Guardians. Yeah. That one I actually really like. Yeah, that was a really great one. I like that one a lot. YH. I don't know what that means. You hear. You hear. I don't know. <laughs> Arthur Christmas. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is the one about Santa's son. I'm going to look it up. Arthur Christmas. Uh, yeah, I think it's a one that looks Arthur really Christmas. cute. To oh, see. yeah, with James McAvoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. This one looked really, really cute. Is this on Netflix? It is on Netflix, huh? I don't know. I know there's another. There's oh, a yeah, with random ones we watched last Bill year. Bill Nye. Really there was one about this male person who worked... Like, his dad ran the postal, whatever, and he had to go work at, like, this mail place where nobody, like, sends mail. And it's actually where Santa lives, but he's not Santa. Mm. He's this toy maker who, like, he basically helps him become Santa. Actually, it was really cute, but it was also really sad. And I think that was a Netflix original from last Christmas. But I don't remember what it was called. Dang, there's so many Christmas movies now. Yeah. Um, the most fun I think I've ever had with a Christmas movie is watching somebody who'd never seen Elf for the first time. Like, who'd never even heard of it, but was in their, like, 30s or 40s. They'd never seen it before. Laughing hysterically at just everything in that movie. They're like, this is the funniest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> like, it's so sweet. Yeah, it's one of my mom's <laughs> absolute favorites. That was a tradition. We watched that every year. Santa Claus 2, though. I love Santa Claus 2 as well. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. We should watch Arthur Christmas because that looks really cute. 
My kids are always up for watching a new movie, so. Christmas movie. And then we still need to make gingerbread cookies with those munchkins. And bruschetta. And, oh Not yeah. bruschetta. Um, Is it bruschetta? No. No, that's, biscotti. That's something else. Biscotti. <laughs> we I can, can make bruschetta. Bruschetta. We, you can put. Bruschetta is also good. But yeah, bruschetta, bruschetta is, is really a completely good. different thing. We used to make a lot of bruschetta. A lot of bruschetta. I love bruschetta. It's so easy and it's so delicious. Homemade French bread. Mm -hmm. Chef's kiss. How are you doing over there? Good. I crocheted this a lot faster than I expected. A round of applause. Thank you. That's awesome. I know we should probably make that biscotti soon, huh? So we can mail it to your mom. Yes. Yes, we should. I will. She apparently is going to be making a bunch of cookies next week Ooh. and possibly send us two boxes full of goodies. So. Ooh. That actually sounds like a really good idea. Baking cookies for Christmas. I always forget that that's such a fun, simple gift that you can give people because everyone loves baked goods. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite part about working at the doctor's office around the holidays was there were so many cookies, so many cakes, so many good, food, like so much good stuff that we all had to like do a diet challenge excuse me, like an exercise challenge right after the holidays because we all gain like 10 pounds just from like either like rep or like drug reps bringing like gifts for the holidays hmm. or like patients bringing in gifts. It was like you got so fat. <laughs> like, plus every Friday a drug rep would bring us coffee. So I was like, oh no, I'm in danger. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We're almost done. Nice. That actually is not. I did that this whole time. I'm so proud of me. And it doesn't look bad. I'm learning. Are you proud of your creation? I I'm am kidding. super <laughs> proud of my creation. <laughs> yes. She lives. You're, you're going to become a pro in no time. Yeah. I'm excited to learn new... I think I remember how to do the double crochet. Yeah, so I'm thinking about... Because, you know, we could drag this on forever. I think about doing one more part of this. Um, and then letting people finish their scarves. And then I think we'll learn a new stitch. Mm -hmm and start a new project new project that sounds like fun. i think four parts is good because pretty much like i said the rest of the scarf is repetitive so it's not like i have to keep yeah teaching new things showing people what to do next yeah so they can pretty much work on it during the week if they want yeah and then we can finish it up next week and then start something new what do you think the next project's gonna be? Do you have any ideas? Or is that spoilers? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I was thinking maybe a hat. Because half double crochets look really nice in a hat. Um, but I don't know. I was trying to think of something else to do. Or maybe like a cow. But it would be maybe if we want to do something different though. Because a cow is pretty much similar to a scarf, but you'd be working in the round. Well, so you would with the hat, so gotcha. I guess I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> because I have no idea. Or Okay, I th think that's right. We could learn a new stitch that uses the single crochet, but it's a new stitch, and then do something else. Like learn a texture stitch. Hmm. There's actually a bunch of different stitches you can learn now that you know the single crochet. Like there's yeah. the moss stitch, which is a single crochet and a chain one. Um, there's... Hmm. 
there's one crochet, crochet or single crochet stitch that I don't remember what it's called, but you could use that to make a hot pad. Oh, that's clever. I'd have to relearn the stitch, but somebody designed like a hot pad mm -hmm. pattern um, and did that. Okay, I think that's 20. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, twenty. Let me see. Question mark. Oh, look at you! Barely had enough. A little clump. Your little clump. <laughs> Two, four, six. It's my eight, rapper name. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, little clump. twenty. <laughs> yeah, there's your three squares. Yes. It looks really nice. Thank you. Now I can go to the next color. Yep. So then you do, you switch to your next color. Oh my gosh. <sighs> All I'm right. Learning. Well, I think we're probably going to go ahead and wrap it up for this Sunday. But like we were saying, or like I was talking about earlier, um, if you guys want to keep working on your scarves throughout this week, you are more than welcome. And I think we will try to finish up our scarves next Sunday. So we'll have another like chill and hang out as we work on our scarves next week. And then I think we'll learn a new stitch and I will have a project, another project for us to learn together. So uh, I hope you guys all have a very good week. You know, I can switch back to the double camera because you don't need to look at my hands anymore. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have a really good week. I really appreciate you guys joining us for another Sunday hangout. And we will be here again on Wednesday for our Whip Wednesday Live where we just hang out and crochet whatever. Or cross stitch or whatever project. So just come over and hang out with us. And then we will finish up our beginner scarves next Sunday for part four. So again, my name is Dana, this is Becca, and we hope that you guys have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, until bye. next time.